goodbye, Norma Jean. Though I never knew you at all, I've had the grace to hold you so. Those around you crawled. Crawled out of the woodwork, and they whispered into your brain. They said you on the treadmill, and they made you change your name. Like a candle in the wind Never knowing who to cling to When the rain set in I would have liked to have known you But I was just a key Your candle burned out long before Your legend ever did Like a comet blazing across the evening sky Gone too soon Like a rainbow fading in the twinkling of an eye Gone too soon Splendidly bright here one day, go one night like 
the loss of sunlight on a cloudy afternoon. Adesso si vive 
Some say love, it is a river that drowns the tender reed. Some say love, it is a razor that leaves your soul. Some say love, it is a hunger, an endless aching need. I say love, it is a flower, and you, it's all. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die.
with faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our sister Aileen Zalika for burial. Our sister was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise her to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Aileen. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Kindly be seated for an appreciation. Good afternoon to everyone. To those who don't know me, I am Aileen's sister. And I am speaking on the behalf of Aileen, what I know she would like to say to you all. To all my loved ones, don't grieve for me. I am now, I am free. A friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss, Yes, these things I too will miss. But do not burden with times of sorrow. I wish you sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full. I've savored much. Good friends, good times. Perhaps my time has seen all too brief. Don't lengthen it now with undue grief. Lift up your hearts and share with me. God wanted me now. He has set me free. And I say to all, thank you to those for all who have given her a helping hand in the time of her need. You will know who you are, too many to name. So God bless you all. And Peace be unto you. Thanks very much. God bless. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm speaking today as Auntie Aileen's niece on behalf of myself and Gaskin and my sisters, Debbie and Carol. We also have half-siblings, her niece, Catherine, and her nephews, Keith, Wayne, and Leon. Auntie Aileen was always, and continues to be, one of the most influential and amazing people in my life. As a toddler, my parents left for England to form a better life and create a new home for us. 
leaving me here with my family. Auntie Aileen was one of the beautiful, loving family members who raised me until I eventually joined my parents. I first returned home as a teenager and immediately was engulfed by our overwhelming love for each other. No matter the number of years of separation, nothing could ever quell that love and the joining of hearts. My sisters and I are forever grateful for so many wonderful memories. Memories from my sister Carol, the lady with a huge personality, amazing smile, twinkling eyes, and more importantly at the time, the woman responsible for my tiny ankles and bandy legs. Dancing and having fun were a big part of her life. She loved being the hostess. Her parties in the basement were legendary. She learnt the electric slide in no time, long before I could master it, and went on to perform the dance with some friends at a church talent show. Cooking was an art in her kitchen. Everything always cooked to perfection, with her extra special ingredients of love and a splash of rum. The family home, as she called it, was spotless, with everything having a place. And from my sister Debbie, memories from her, the first time I met her, I was 11 years old. I couldn't believe that someone so beautiful, funny, kind and glamorous was actually my aunt. She made me feel uniquely special when she called me dear heart, even though I know she called many others that too. Her high-pitched crazy lady laugh was infectious. She had a brilliant and wicked sense of humour. We all agree that memories of Auntie Aileen are always accompanied by a smile. She was generous, glamorous and godly. Although we're happy she's finally at peace, we will miss her very much. She will always be in our hearts. May her soul rest in everlasting peace. Let us now stand and sing the hymn 384.
let us pray. Almighty God, we remember before you today your servant Aileen, and we pray that having opened to her the gates of larger life, you will receive her more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have served you in the past, she may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Kindly be seated for the first Bible reading. Good afternoon to all. Reading from the Gospel of Revelations, chapter 11, verses 2 to 7. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm appointed, Psalm 23. We stand for the singing of the psalm.
Kindly be seated for the second Bible reading from the Gospel according to John. Good afternoon to all. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 1 through 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the word of the Lord. We will now have the eulogy by Ms. Joan Park. Good afternoon, everyone. You can hear me through my mask, but I'll take it off so you can see my beautiful face. Uh, my name is June Ward Barkai, and it is an honor to share about my aunt, Aileen Zalika Walcott, also known as Miss Gaskin, little girl, Mrs. Walcott, Aileen, aunt, Auntie Aileen, Miss A, 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 and Little Girl, a name that Father uh, Devere gave to her. She was born on September 3rd, 1934. She was a woman full of life and love of life. Her childlike heart just drew you into her. Children and adults both gravitated towards her. Once you were drawn into her, you were locked in for life. What can be said about such a little woman with such a passion for life in a few moments, in 10, 15 minutes? She loved her family, she loved people, she loved music, she loved dancing, and of course, laughing. She sang like a bird and whistled like a sailor to any tune she can whistle. When she sang a hymn, you felt as though you were in heaven. Her spirit of gentleness and compassion touched everyone she came into contact with. I'm sure that everyone here can think of a moment that you had encountered with her and definitely can smile. What can, um, and no doubt, she also took pride in whatever she did, how little or how big. Her many contributions to St. Matthias Church are admired, from being one of the first female chalice assistants to the now Bishop Fenty, to being in the choir, being part of the Mother's Union, even the Men's Fellowship, and many other organizations within the church. Whatever was required, she was there. She married the love of her life in 1958, and they were married for 58 years until his passing in 2016. As a teenager, I would spend my summer vacation every year with them. And I remember that the phone would ring at the house, rather day or night, and Uncle Clyde would say, Eileen, dying for me. He said that even without answering the phone. He knew that as long as the phone rang, it was for her. 
People of all ages looked up to Ants for advice and direction because she had such an intuitive spirit about her. The compassion she had for fellow human beings was unremarkable. One afternoon, her and Uncle Clyde were out and I was at the house, I must have been about 11, and a neighbor knocked and asked for some ice. I gave him the ice and then I asked for payment of a dollar. When Aunt and Uncle Clyde came home and I told her of my transaction, she said, well, we don't do that. And we laughed, we laughed, we laughed. And the years she worked as manager as well at the Vista Cinema, every teenager's delight was that. Because if you knew that Mrs. Walcott was there and Mrs. Walcott knew you, and you didn't have any money to pay for the picture, you know that she would say, come through, come through. And she would take her own money and make sure that you got in to see the movie. In her own home, as Anne said, everything had its place. And if you decided not to return things to its proper place, you were told, not there, over here, or just a point and a look. In the past few years, she never complained about the changes in her body or the, any pain at all, always with a smile and a pleasant disposition. We will miss your infectious laugh and your movie star smile. And thank you for showing me how much fun life can be when you have self-respect and respect for others. Most importantly, thank you for showing me that my personal relationship with God is the key to life. Your dedication and loyalty to God is your legacy that you have left with me. We would like to thank those of you who have been there for her in whatever manner, for doctor's appointments, shopping, errands, or just calling to see how she was. We say thank you. To Mary, Margot, Curtis, and Jeffrey, and Lois, we could not have managed without you. And to Margot, you have been a godsend for, for me personally, but for us. You've gone be above and beyond what you were to do. So, as Proverbs 31 verse 29 says, many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Aunts, Aileen, Auntie Aileen, Gaudy Aileen, we honor you. Rest in peace. Thank you. Let us now stand and sing the hymn before the address, hymn 427, Through All the Changing Scenes of Life.
Words from St. John's Gospel, chapter 14 and verse 5. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. We are gathered on this occasion to thank God for the life of Aileen. She was the other part of that great partnership, Aileen and Clyde. I know there was a famous Bonnie and Clyde partners in crime, but at St. Matthias we had Aileen and Clyde, partners in Christ. Even though they didn't have biological children, yet they were the parents of many. They were loved and respected by all. Together they were a great partnership and supported each other in ministry here at St. Matthias. Aileen was petite in stature, but when she smiled, she lit up the room, and she smiled regularly. For you see, her smile demonstrated what was in her heart. We heard in her, in the eulogy, that she was a compassionate person. And this she was. She was a person of love. And because of this, as many of us remember her today, we may remember our last conversation, our last visit, or our final encounter. We may find today a bit challenging, especially if we are only able to join online. Our gospel reading captures for us the last lesson of Jesus before he's killed. It's the last time that he would be with his disciples. For he had just shared with them for the third and final time that he would die. But unlike the other occasions, this time it resonated with them and they believed him. Jesus tried to console them as much as possible, but they had commenced their grief, the grieving process as they anticipated what would unfold in the next couple hours. They contemplated what would life be like without him. It was just too much for many of them as they were feeling as they were overcome by their feelings. This is captured for us in the question Thomas posed in the gospel. Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus wanted them, however, to see the bigger picture of how God was at work, even in this very situation. He wanted them to realize that this was all integral to God's plan of salvation. He wanted them to realize that he needed to die so that they and we all might have the opportunity to live. But Thomas didn't get it. He did not understand. He was still in shock, still caught up in his emotions. It seems as though he had forgotten all that Jesus had done while he was with them. And sometimes we can be like Thomas. Grief can affect us, causing us to forget. Earlier today, I had a conversation with one of the family members, and it's been a difficult time for the family because they have been experiencing bout of grief after bout of grief. And she shared with me how yesterday, as she attempted to sign in the 
the book. She couldn't even remember the name of the relative she was supposed to sign for. Oftentimes we attend funerals and the relatives seem to be in a state of stupor. They're physically present, but they're not present. They're, not, they're oblivious to what is happening around them. We may say that we have faith, but on occasions like this, we have questions like Thomas about the way. Jesus reminded Thomas and the other disciples as well as us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And as a teacher in his final lesson, Jesus is encouraging us as he did those in that room with him to look back at the three years he ministered. It was a time when he healed the sick, when he performed miracles, when he restored persons to life, and he was about to culminate his life to afford all of us the opportunity to be reconciled with God. He was about to die so that we could have a relationship with God, so that we could have the hope even in circumstances like today when we encounter death. All that Jesus did was because of love. Aileen held fast to this and demonstrated this in our life. She was a loving person. Just think back on how she greeted you. She usually began with an endearing term. Very often, dear heart, How are you today? On the rare occasion, it might be sweetie or something of that nature. And what came next? That million dollar smile. The warmth, the love that exuded from her caused her to be loved by all. One encounter is all that it took. To fall in love with Aileen. As we remember Aileen and our characteristics, let us also remember Jesus' example of love, a love in which we can find comfort as we encounter the spectrum of emotions caused by grief. Yes, we may have questions like Thomas, but we are encouraged to call to mind God's love for us in Jesus and the benefits that we have been afforded because of this love. It is also because of this love that we can believe that Aileen is now out of our struggles, out of our suffering, and that she is now reunited with Clyde, her partner, and all the faithful departed. She is in a better place. She had made her peace with God before leaving this world. It is a place for which she had been preparing all her life. Let us today follow her example and live in love. Let us demonstrate that we understand the lessons that Jesus has taught us, even in the final lesson as captured in our gospel. A lesson that reminds us of the benefits received through his life, death, resurrection, and ascension. Let us therefore be comforted and live our lives as a people of hope. Amen. Let me now on 
behalf of the clergy present, the very Reverend Dr. Jeffrey Gibson, Dean of the St. Michael Cathedral, my immediate predecessor, the Reverend Canon De Vere Murrow, and indeed on my own behalf, and I cannot forget Tony, Destiny, and Justin, who would all would have loved to be here, that's my family, extend to you our deepest and sincerest condolences. We assure you of our prayerful support at this time. And as I extend on behalf of the clergy present, I also extend on behalf of the Reverend Angela Phillips, the chaplain of the Barbados Mothers Union, who too wanted to be here, but because she has a funeral in her own parish, has ex asked me to extend condolences on her behalf. So please accept her condolences and may she be excused from this evening's proceedings. Let me now commit Aileen to the mercy of God as we say, rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. May she rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Would you please stand? Let us now with confidence and hope confess the faith into which we are baptized as we say together the Apostles' Creed as printed on page 6. I believe in God. Kindly kneel for the prayers. Your response, hear us, Lord. For our sister Aileen, let us pray to the Lord Christ, who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you console Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Aileen and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raise the dead to life. Raise our sister to eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who, who repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life of hope. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you your daughter Aileen, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that her death may recall to us your victory over death. 
and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way, and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, to the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. The Mother's Union will now render the Mother's Union benediction. Please remain seated while Canon de Vera Morrow brings a tribute. Good evening all. I should like to thank Father Sandiford for giving me this opportunity of sharing with you some of my memories of the 20 years that Aileen and I shared this space, this parish, life and love. Aileen Walcott was like salt, and I do not mean that disrespectfully. What I do mean is that she got into everything in the parish. She was not much to look at but she was everywhere. Was there a fair? Aileen was there. Was there a dinner? Aileen turned up. When the men's fellowship had the cricket matches, guess who was there? And when the young people had the affairs and affairs, Aileen put on her shorts and her tops, and you couldn't swing a better leg than Aileen. She was always there. And when you thought that you would give her a break and ask her, well, stand down this time or, you know, 
don't bother, you don't have to get involved, she still turned up. And it is among all those things that we found her at the altar, serving, being a chalice bearer, going out to the sick. Eileen had certain families that she looked after in the community. And when month by month we made up care packages, and especially at Christmas when we sent out larger care packages, Eileen had her people, and she would ensure that they were looked after under all circumstances. She was a little woman, but as the saying is, she was a Mabatan woman. And I remember that very often I would trouble her because I would pass her and tap her on her head and I would say to her, Aileen, but at your age, don't you think you should have grown up by now? And she would just give me a smile and move on. Aileen had Clyde and Clyde had Aileen. Clyde was probably, and I say this without fear of contradiction, one of the best church wardens this parish has ever had. And indeed, one of the best church wardens that I have ever worked with in my ministry. But Clyde and Aileen were totally different. Clyde was a very quiet person. Aileen was a mover and a shaker. The story is told that when Aileen said to a family member that she was getting married to Clyde, the family member said, you're getting married to a good man but do not expect much conversation. And so it was that Aileen, that Clyde would stay home and read the newspaper from top to bottom and back to front. And by the end of the day, Aileen would have gone to St. Lucy twice and come back. <laughs> Aileen loved to travel. Clyde was a stay-at-home person. And I remember well that Aileen had a lot of knickknacks and bits and pieces around the house. Everybody knew it about Aileen and her plants. In the house she had artificial plants and real plants. And one, one year she went away and left strict instructions with Clyde that he should water the plants if he did nothing else. And about a few days before Aileen came back, Clyde remembered that he had not watered the plants. And when Aileen came in, she realized that Clyde had watered both the real plants and the artificial plants. Needless to say, she was not a happy camper. Mm. But for all of these things, we loved Aileen, and Aileen loved us unstintingly. Father, you would have told you about her smile and her endearments. She was that kind of person. Indeed, I would have wanted to visit with her in her last days and weeks, but unfortunately, because of the COVID protocol, we could not visit. But I managed to say a few words with her uh, to her and with her on the telephone at one point. Mm. And so we are gathered this afternoon to thank God and to say farewell to our sister Aileen. My family joins with me in extending condolences to Aileen's family. Aileen loved my son Matthew, even though Matthew was not much of a church member. He came and he went as he pleased. But every September, Aileen would remember my son's birthday and would call him early in the morning. So today, as we come to thank God and to celebrate her life, as Christian people, we do not say goodbye. Rather, we say to Aileen, farewell, Aileen. Farewell until we meet again. Via con Dios. Go with God until we meet again. Amen and amen. Would you please stand for the commendation?
Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your sins. By the side. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust. Yet even at the grave we make our sound. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Give rest to Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let us commend our sister Elaine to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Deliver your servant Elaine, O sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set her free from every bond, that she may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitations, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Aileen. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Aileen, into paradise, may the angels lead you at your coming, may the martyrs receive you and bring you into the holy city, Jerusalem. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord. May she and all the faithful departed through the mercies of God rest in peace and rise in glory. We now sing our final hymn in church, 349, There Was Joy in Heaven.
In the midst of life, we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins? You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer, forgive us our sins, and at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. Ensure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our sister Aileen Zalika, and we commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved Son shall come again in judgment, both this, our sister, and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. 
Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are enjoying felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray now for the bereaved. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not soaring as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Merciful Father, Lord of all life, we praise you that humanity is made in your image and reflect your truth and light. We thank you for the life of your daughter, Aileen Zalika, for the love and mercy she received from you and showed among us. Above all, we rejoice at your gracious promise to all your servants living and departed, that we shall rise again at the coming of Christ. And we ask that in due time, we may share with this our sister that clearer vision when we shall see your face in the same Christ, our Lord. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord. May she and all the faithful departed through the mercies of God rest in peace and rise in glory. What a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. The hymn 491.
Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. The hymn 497, this is my story. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot you have taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. The hymn, It is well with my soul.
when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair, when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. The hymn, when the roll is called up yonder. Let us pray. Father in heaven, you gave your son Jesus Christ to the suffering and to death on the cross and raised him to life and glory. Grant us a patient faith in time of darkness and strengthen our hearts with the knowledge of your love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now to God's gracious mercy and protection, I commit her this day. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious unto her. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon her and give her peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. This concludes the Thanksgiving service of Aileen Zelika Walcott. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God 
said, uh-huh. If time was on. 